Hi everyone, so today I've got a vacuum that I've never ever knew existed until yesterday. So when I ordered it, it actually arrived today. It's a Tough Master vacuum. 1000 watt, basically you know what it is, it's like a Henry, but it's wet and dry and it's bagless. So I thought a bagless Henry that can suck up water with a clear bin and it's cyclonic like a Dyson. Yeah, I've got to try it out. So here it is. Um, yeah, so a friend messaged me yesterday. And he goes, this vacuum looks really cool. So I just checked it out and I was like, whoa, I never knew that existed. I'm just cutting the tape off, by the way. If you want to read the box, here it is. So it's just a unique looking vacuum. And it comes with these accessories, although I'm going to be unboxing it now so you'll see them anyway. So let me just cut this tape off. Yeah, so I thought this was going to be brilliant for mess tests and things like that. So, let me just hurry up here. There we go. Now, the best bit begins. Upon opening the box, we have... Tough Master. So the instruction manual, which is pretty boring. I don't like reading instruction manuals because they're pretty boring. They tell you things like, Don't unplug the cable, it's dangerous, don't put on it. Don't touch moving part, you know, things like that, yeah, so. This, however, is the first thing out of the box, and that's the wet and dry floor tool. So that's good for sucking out water off of hard floors. Yeah, it's got rubber squeegees. This is, a quite, this is quite a nice design, so when you push it forward, yeah, the squeegees will not push the water around, because when you push it forward, it bends like that, and see these zigzags? They're actually airflow channels, so... It's not actually sealed to the floor unless it's on that side, if that makes sense. So I push it forward and the water opens up. No, it doesn't open up. It fits through these zigzags, basically, yeah. And the back motion wipes the floor dry. So it's a pretty clever design, that is. And it's got two of them on both sides. And you've got some wheels, which is rubber coated as well. So that looks really good. The floor tool... Yeah, that's what it is. It looks quite cheap, it looks rubbish. But they're actually rubber coated wheels, that's not too bad. It looks like it will seal the suction in, somewhat, but not fully because it's got these edge cleaning channels, so we'll have to see. And again, it's got the rubber squeegee at the back and some stiff bristles at the front. They're not that stiff compared to Henry bristles, but you know, it is what it is. It's a floor tool. Worst case scenario, if it does fit, I can fit a Henry head onto here, so yeah. So we've got the pipe itself now. It feels quite cheap, kind of cheap, yeah. It's not really crush proof because look. Yeah. I mean it's a 75 pound vacuum off eBay. It's actually not gonna swivel on this end, which is a bit rubbish, but yeah, it does on this side, so that's alright. It could be worse, it could be fixated on both ends. Um, nah, that doesn't come off really. In the pictures, it looked like that would come off like a Henry, but nah, it doesn't. It's fully fixated on. But you do have a nice handle bit though. And a suction release vent there, which I'm going to be closing for maximum performance. And yeah, that's that. That's what it looks like. I hope it's 32mm. Lift out this styrofoam. Oh, look at that. Well, let me get this wand out first. It's a telescopic wand. That feels quite nice actually. It reminds me of something I've seen before. It looks familiar, but you've also got a tool holder on it. But yeah, it's a telescopic one. Yeah, that feels pretty good quality. Yeah, and can I fit a Henry head on it? Nah, you can't fit a Henry head on it. That is rubbish, man. You can't fit a Henry head on it. But yeah, it's what it is. I think it's 35mm in diameter. But oh well, at least the one is good quality, isn't it? The moment we've all been waiting for is the vacuum itself. So, yeah, look at it. It's... Doesn't that look cool? It looks like a Dyson design, which it basically is. Yeah. The wheels look Dyson-esque, even though it's not. That shroud definitely does. Yeah, it looks pretty cool. And in the box you've got a 
That's your crevice tool. Look at that crevice tool. <laughs> what kind of crevice tool is that? Well, it's certainly unique. And also, ooh, you've got an adapter. I'm hoping I can fit a Henry head onto the vacuum. So if I... nah, it's a loose fit. It's a loose fit. Look. Oh, actually, if I force it on because it's rubber, yeah, it might just fit. So it does somewhat fit, and then you push that on. Yeah, so you can fit a Henry head on via this rubber adapter. So that's a bit weird, but at least you can do it. Yeah. And there's a spare for some reason, I don't know why. But this is a dusting brush, which is pretty soft, and you can angle the attachment like that. So let's take a closer look at this Tough Master. I was going to say Task Master, I don't know why, but yeah, Tough Master. So that's the on and off switch, which is a dial, and that's the exhaust port, so you can use it as a blower as well for blowing leaves away in that. This is the short cable, it says on the box 5 meters, so that's quite rubbish, isn't it? And the cable storage is ridiculous as well because you've literally just got this hook at the back for storage and I don't like that. What you can do though is wrap it around like a, uh, a VAC 6131 or whatever, a top VAC basically, so you can just do that, which is probably what I'm going to be doing. So yeah. So you lift this up, revealing the motor. And then you've got this filter in here, which looks like it's quite nicely sealed because you've got the seal around there, so it looks quite nicely sealed, which is a Dyson looking filter. You've got a sponge, wow, yeah, that seal came out. So yeah, it looks quite nicely sealed because there's a seal on the other side as well. So you've got that sponge filter and underneath you've got the uh, cycle. Let me just fix this seal. There we go. Get in there, man. Yeah, that sponge filter goes in there and then we lift out a cyclone so yeah you've got nine cyclones I think one two three four five six. nine cyclones yeah so it's ten cyclones you've got the bin which is the first cyclone and then you've got nine more so it's ten cyclones in total that's not bad actually yeah it looks alright but if it works then it works oh actually what's this you got some wiring in there I want to know what that's for Let's lift this out. Yeah, that is one big cyclone. Look at that. Yeah, that looks quite cool, doesn't it? A tub vacuum with a Dyson looking design. I like that. So yeah. It's actually sealed at the bottom as well. Because Dyson's have a seal at the bottom of the cyclone. And this one does have it, so that's good. So there's the cyclone. It's more the cyclones go in there. Whichever way they do go in. Which way do they go in? I guess it goes in anyway. There we go. Filter. And then the motor did. So the pipe goes in there. Which way does it swivel? Oh, it actually does swivel, I think. Let me put this on properly. Took a bit of force. But yeah, it actually does swivel. I was wrong. Yeah, it swivels at the machine end rather than on the hose connection. So it does swivel. That's alright, isn't it? You've got onboard tool storage as well, so you can put the crevice tool on. It doesn't really fit on, but it's just such a mess, man. Everything's everywhere. Why don't I be organised? Okay. Vax Turbo Brush on this. Oh, this is a brand new Turbo Brush, by the way. So we'll show you how powerful the suction is for sure. It's a cyclonic vacuum, so I want to test to see if the cyclones really do work as well as a Dyson one. So I'm going to put down some dirt. So I've got a little bit of a mess here. We're going to be testing the cyclone to see how good the filter stays clean. So I've got the massive fat crevice tool.
yeah, so the shroud is now clogged, probably because I sucked up too much in one go, and there's a lot of build-up at the top. That doesn't really happen with Dysons, unless you suck up a lot in one go anyway, so... Right, so considering I picked up all that dirt, in such a quick amount of time, the field looks quite clean. Let's see how much recyclons I've actually filtered out, keeping the filter clean, because for it to be that dirty, or clean, the cyclones have actually captured all that fine dust, okay? That is quite impressive. And not only that, let me just put that down. See all that fine dust in there? That thick layer of fine dust deep at the bottom. Probably about half an inch thick. The cyclones really do do their job. <gasps> oh, I got my brand new vacuum all dirty. But I remember that is a wet and dry vacuum so I can suck up water and all of that, all that dust and dirt will automatically self clean just from vacuuming up water. You don't need to convert it, nothing, just suck up water and that's it. You don't need to convert it to a dry vacuum or a wet vacuum. It's literally that simple. Just switch it on and then that's it. By the way, that's the parking bracket so you can put the bracket on there and then it holds the wand and the floor tool. <laughs> It just shut off by itself because it's at the full line. I don't know where the full line is, but I know for a fact with bagless vacuums that have a shroud, once the dirt reaches the shroud, that's when it's full. And in this case, that's what happened. It's got a max fill line somewhere that you can't see, which is invisible. But yeah, it self-cleaned my vacuum and it can detect when it's full. That's pretty cool, isn't it? So I'll switch it off, switch it on again. It knows when it's full, it's clever. What a clever vacuum! Wow. Yeah, the filter's a bit wet. You wash that anyway. I mean, come on, it's common sense, yeah. To wash your vacuum filter, it's captured... It was clean the cyclones a bit. Well, I actually did vacuum before, and that's why the majority of the dust in the cyclones have actually gone, but it's not because of the water, although it has captured some of the water in there. So now I know, I've clocked on as to why these wires are here, and that's because it's connected to whatever's in here, which connects to that metal pin in there, so maybe it's got like a sensor to tell you that the water level's too high. So yeah, very, very clever. Let's try that again, yeah? Yeah, it knows. This thing knows. Yeah. Wicked. It didn't clean at the top there, so that's just minor. But the rest of it, I mean, the major components of the vacuum that I do have the airflow get washed. And that's good enough because you don't want to be dealing with a dirty vacuum. Just do this. Switch it off. And it's a fact that all cyclonic vacuums have dusty and dirty cyclones. You can't avoid it because that's how they're supposed to work, yeah? This is a second bin for fine dust. Well, downwards. This is a collection chamber, fine dust only, yeah? And the fact that you can wash it makes it even better. Dyson's don't let you wash their cyclones out. But with this, you can. So, yeah, I love it. Not even that. The whole shroud as well. You can't wash a shroud on a Dyson. Because on a Dyson, behind the shroud, that's where a lot of fine dust builds up as well, causing odours, but with this you can wash it! Genius! Upon drying out my vacuum, I've discovered that, you know, the sensor works like this. Water conducts electricity, right? So when the water level reaches up to there, the two metal pins conduct electricity and that forms a circuit. So it lets the motor, whatever it is in here, know in there because that's the part that connects to the water through that electrical thing there that it's full and then it cuts out 
Well done. Whoever designed this vacuum at Tough Master, well done.